Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you some of the new updates in Krita 4.2. That's coming up next. The first new feature that we'll take a look at has to do with resizing the thumbnails. If we go to our layers panel here, there's a button in the top right we can click on, and we can increase or decrease the thumbnail size. So you can see as I start to drag it larger, I can manually change the size of the thumbnail to whichever size I like. And this setting will be saved in your Krita workspace, so each time you launch Krita, the thumbnails will remain that same size. One thing I do notice is that the icons do look a little blockier than they should, so for some reason, maybe the icons are getting bigger, but the resolution remains the same. Maybe that's something that'll be fixed. But at the very least, it gives you a visual indication of what's on that layer. The next new feature that we'll take a look at is the sharpness property. Let's go ahead and select a brush from the brushes and presets. Let's make sure we're looking in all brushes, and the brush that I want is Bristles 3 Large Smooth. But you could really select any kind of bristly brush. Now normally if I select black and I paint a stroke, you can see that my brush looks something like this. It's already a bristly brush. But we can enhance this bristle effect and get a lot of control over it by going into the brush settings up here in the properties bar. And if we look under general, we can toggle on sharpness. Now sharpness will let us sharpen or smooth our stroke, and so we can enhance those bristles or make them more subtle. You'll notice there's a soften edge slider and a strength slider, and beneath that there are some more advanced settings, but we're just going to focus on these two sliders here. If we look up near the top, we can see an example of what our stroke will look like, and if we begin to edit these sliders, we'll see the stroke will update. So keep an eye on the stroke and the slider. I'm going to go ahead and start to reduce the strength, and you can see that as I do that, it starts to eat away at the brush stroke. And I can actually do a brush stroke over here to test it. I can clear it out here if I want to erase it. So let's just do a mark here with the strength at 42. Let's reduce the strength to 7 and we'll do a mark. And you can see that it changes the look of the bristles. It makes it a lot more bristly, or the bristles get finer as you begin to reduce the strength. If I go all the way down to 1, you can see it's a very bristly brush and it looks much different. So if we go out of here and we paint a test stroke, you can see I have a brush that gives me a completely different effect. This might work better for grass or hair or something like that. I'm going to go back to the brush properties. I'll add a little bit more strength here. We'll do a test stroke. And we can also soften the edge. Paint a test stroke and you can see it kind of has the opposite effect. It softens the brush. So you probably want to use these independently of each other to either sharpen a brush that's already smooth or to smooth out a brush that's already sharp. You can also control sharpness with your pen properties, and as I mentioned, there's some settings down here to add curves as well. If you wanted to save the brush that you created, you could of course save a new brush preset. The next new feature in Krita 4.2 is something that I'm really excited about, and that is the new Artistic Color Selector. To find that, we want to go to Settings, Dockers, and then Artistic Color Selector. Now in my case, that's showing up down in the very bottom right, so I'm just going to drag that out and move it into its own position here. And then I'm just gonna make that window much larger. This is a really useful tool for painting because it simplifies color. So let's take a look at how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and click up here in the top right and I'm gonna reset this to its default. The first slider controls the value scale that you see over here on the left. And if we click on this value scale, we can change our color and we can switch between these different values of gray and white and black. You can see that when I do that, it also updates the center of the color selector. In my regular color selector, I'll pick a color here. I'm going to choose this green color. You can see that when I did that, it changed the background to show me which color I have. And it also tried to approximate on the target here where that color would be. Another thing you might notice is the location of the hues on the artistic color selector are in the same position as they are on the advanced color selector. So everything is synchronized. Now it's going to make more sense what this is trying to do if we change the properties here and we add more divisions of color. Let's go ahead and drag this up until that circle ends up on its own square and now we can see approximately that's where this color lies. So when you're choosing color using the advanced color selector, you're kind of choosing from a lot of different colors here. You know, you could get a red orange, but what about this red orange? Or what about that red orange? There's lots of red oranges here. So that can make it hard to decide upon colors, and it can make it hard to have consistent color in your paintings. Same goes for choosing value. You could choose any value here, but you have a lot of options. It can be a lot easier just to have these few value stops here, and then you know that your values are going to be pretty even and pretty consistent. 
You can have your colors be more consistent if you're always picking this particular yellow green and not one of the other yellow greens that you could choose. And if we look at the artistic color selector in more detail, you might also notice that in addition to the hue going around the ring here, as we move in toward the center of the circle, then the color is starting to get more dull. So if we click on the next swatch, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one, you can see the color gets more and more dull. It starts to get more desaturated and the chroma changes. Now I can change the way that colors display by clicking on this other button in the top right sub-dialog. Right now I'm viewing this as HSI, but I could view it as HSL, HSV, or HSY to get different results. The third slider here controls the division of rings, so I could have more divisions of color or fewer. But again, this really simplifies things for you when you're painting. Now it takes a bit of effort to explain how you would use something like this in a painting, but for now I want to keep this video focused on the new features. So let's look at another new feature which works alongside the artistic color selector. Let's go to settings, dockers, gamut masks. This is opening here in the bottom right for me, so I'm just going to drag it out into its own window. Now gamut masks can further limit your colors. At this point when you're limiting colors it tends to be more of a creative choice if you want a specific kind of look or a specific kind of mood in your painting. To show you what I mean I'll click on one of the gamut masks. Let's go ahead and try this one here. If you hover over it you can see that it's called atmospheric triad. Because it's a triad that means that it's a triangle that represents three different points of color. So you can see I have orange, green, and this magenta color. If I want to, I can use the rotation slider up here at the top to rotate this around, and if I wanted it to be pointed at yellow as my primary color, then what I get are some complementary colors. But as you can see, they're a bit limited on these colors here for the green and the magenta. So what I can do with this is now I can only choose these colors here. It doesn't mean that I can't make the colors lighter or darker, but I wouldn't want to change the chroma or the saturation. Let's try a different gamut mask. We'll try this one here, which is complementary. And again, if we want to rotate the angle here, we could have a green to purple complementary color scheme. And the gamut has been limited so that we have mostly this green to choose from, mostly this purple to choose from, and then some of the other colors are still accessible, but they're very, very desaturated, almost gray. So I'm going to go ahead and move this artistic color selector down. And let's take a look at some examples of artwork that uses gamut masking. In this first example, I'm using a complementary gamut mask. If I go ahead and rotate this a bit to green and purple, this is the color scheme that I'm using for this particular painting here. I have these purple trees, I have the green grass, and then I have this blue going on here in the sky, but this blue is very muted and desaturated. I'll need to edit my grid a bit here, and you can see if I sample colors, then they're staying within the gamut. Even these browns over here, they're still within the gamut. I'm not using browns that are outside of the gamut that are too saturated. So that's giving me this really nice look. And even on the clouds here, you can see I'm taking advantage of those desaturated colors. So this is a really fun way to paint, and it gives a lot of life and a lot of character to your paintings. You could use this for landscapes, portraits, still life, anything. Now you're not limited to creating gamut masks using only this tool. You could actually make your own gamut masks if you wanted to. For example, in this painting here, I used this gamut mask. I made my own color wheel here, and then I just created a triangle to plot out my colors. And these are the colors that I used for this painting. You can see it's mostly blue, and it has a few accents of these warmer colors. If you wanted to create a custom gamut mask in Krita, you can do that. You can click on the plus button here in gamut masks. It's going to open up this gamut mask template here. It also creates a new vector layer called mask shapes. We can use the vector shape tools to edit our mask. I'm going to choose the polygonal shape. I'm going to make sure that under tool options it's set to fill with foreground color. And I could create my gamut mask like so. Now I could give that a title. I could preview it in the color picker here by clicking on the eyeball. And then I could click on save to save it. And I can even go in and I can rotate it. So if I didn't get it exactly perfect here I could line it up with a different color or I could reuse this for other artwork. Here's another example of a painting that's using gamut masking. So you can see it's a very powerful way to paint. So those were some of the updates in Krita 4.2. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other Krita tutorials. I'll link you to those at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.